Hey guys, it's uh, literally New Year's Eve, so if you hear pop and booming sounds in the background, that's what they are. They are fireworks. <laughs> This is another one of those uh, speed paint videos uh, to kind of just talk about one of my characters just because it's a lot easier than making a... An, it, it. <laughs> wow, I can't talk today. See, there it is. It's a lot easier than making an animation. Um, so, you know, I can put a lot more effort into... Stop it! I can put a lot more effort into a small thing instead of spreading myself thin across a really long thing to try to get it out in a timely manner. You know what I mean? It's- you, this is a speed paint video. Uh, I'm going to be talking about one of my characters, Wolfgang Archibald. Love this boy. Um, he's evil. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Wolfgang was from the only- the first and I think only D&D uh, &D campaign that I ever like finished, like started and went through a storyline and finished. And it didn't take all that long, It was, but it was a very good campaign. Casey, you're wonderful. You're a very good DM. The Citadel was very fun. <laughs> Wolfgang is a scientist um, who doesn't believe in magic. He came from this city. Uh, its founders were like, no, nah, magic is too dangerous. We're going to completely take it out of our culture. So whenever, uh, you know, generations later, when Wolfgang was born and, be and grew up in this culture, it pretty much, like, the idea in the city was that magic isn't even real. It's not that, like, it's not what we do, it's just not real. So he basically grew up in that society and with that mindset and became a, uh, he became essentially the royal alchemist. And, uh, he kind of worked alongside his mentor. Eventually his mentor found out that the king was hiding all of these things from them like all of these magical truths that you know are important to know <laughs> because they exist and they're being lied to so he tried to expose the king got killed wolf he told wolfgang to beat it because wolfgang was gonna get killed and so he ran away he, the, his fiance uh followed him and so they kind of ran away together eventually they caught up to them wolfgang made it out but his fiance did not. And so that became his main motivation as a character was to get his fiance back. Wolfgang's very antagonistic. He's <laughs> not above hurting other people to get to his goal. He's- Wolfgang's the first evil character I ever played. <laughs> it was fun. It was kind of fun to be like a villain, villain-esque character. And that kind of all started whenever Wolfgang met a man named Jeremiah. Um, after he was on the run, and they kind of worked together. Um, at first, his goal was to study necromancy whenever he first, you know, whenever he found out about magic. And um, his goal was to study necromancy. And he found this guy who was really, really proficient at it. Uh, he knew a lot of stuff, um, and his name was Jeremiah Grimm. And uh, Jeremiah Grimm worked with uh, his girlfriend in his lab in this town, and Wolfgang kind of just learned everything he could from Jeremiah. They became buddies after a while. Then the town found out about what they were doing and the town was not happy. They essentially went on a witch hunt and tried to... They were essentially looking for Wolfgang and Jeremiah to kill them because they thought, it, you know, it's, it's terrible what you're doing. You can't just play God like that. And Wolfgang uh, found out about this before Jeremiah and dipped. He left. He got so scared of what they might do to him that what, he didn't even tell Jeremiah anything. He just ran and didn't look back. And later he found out that they had caught Jeremiah and drowned him in a lake. He was happy that he didn't get caught, but also he felt horrible about leaving his friend to die. But his sort of selfish nature totally overtook that and was like, Okay, but I'm not dead, and I have to stay alive because I have to bring back my fiancé. I have to bring back Veronica. Like, what good am I if I'm dead? What good am I to her and the promise I made to her if I'm not alive? So to him it made sense, but it was still a really kind of a shitty thing to do. <laughs> and he had to confront it later because Jeremiah came back. Because he's a necromancer, <laughs> get it? Anyway, so after that, he realized that he had to start doing his own research in magic if he was ever going to bring back Veronica. He found out about the wish spell, and he's like, okay, what do I have to do- what- Okay. <laughs> okay, what do I have to do to get to that level? Because then I can bring Veronica back. 
and then he realized that that's not easy. <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do. So he kind of, he, he dedicated his life to working on this. He spent years and years and years trying to perfect this spell and he ne could never get to it. And then he was summoned by something called the Citadel, which uh, if you win, this was when the campaign started, it's, it's kind of like a battle royale against a bunch of other people who are in similar like desperate situations. So if you win, you get one wish spell. Uh, so Wolfgang, it, it, once he found out about this, he made it his secondary life goal to find a way to get chosen by the Citadel, and eventually he was. It kind of became this Hunger Games battle royale type thing, uh, and that was the whole campaign. It was going through the, I think it was 16 floors of the Citadel. And oh boy, let me tell you guys something about the Citadel. It's not fun to go through mazes in your imagination. <laughs> If you're running a campaign, don't put your players through mazes. <laughs> Casey, you're a great DM, but the mazes were hard. <laughs> he, uh, while he was in the Citadel, he met someone named Captain... I forgot his real name. He had a real name, but this is his nickname. And his nickname was, uh, Ca he was a pirate, uh, Captain Fluffbucket, and he was the only other member of Wolfgang's team. So Wolfgang was not happy. <laughs> um, Wolfgang and Fluffbucket hated each other. Wolfgang actually, for a scientist, he rolled- he constantly rolled so low on his perception and intelligence checks, and Fluffbucket always rolled super high. So at some- at one point in the game, Wolfgang got super fed up with Fluffbucket, and he started intentionally trying to sabotage him. If you aren't up to Wolfgang's standards, he does not want to deal with you. He basically tried to kill off this guy or like ruin his chances at winning and fluff bucket fluff but the, the really the really sad part is that fluff bucket wanted to be his friend the whole time but wolfgang couldn't see that because he has an evil mindset and he couldn't see that this guy wanted to be friends with him for the whole campaign he only even kind of noticed by the end of it and we still haven't finished that character development oh i want to so bad another thing that happened was that wolfgang actually, di he didn't know about this, but Jeremiah, his girlfriend, survived and she was able to bring him back to life with, you know, the necromancy that they had been studying. And Jeremiah got chosen by the Citadel as well. So while Wolfgang was competing against all these other people, including Jeremiah, he had to finally confront these decisions that he'd made in the past and how they, you know, literally led to this man's death. Uh, eventually they kind of rekindled their relationship, but it was- it was hard. <laughs> because Wolfgang still didn't feel as bad about it as he probably should have. And Jeremiah knew that. <laughs> it was very awkward. Let's see, what else? Oh yeah, another person he met was, her name was Rachel. She, he met her in the Citadel. She was on a different team, but they kind of, he, he, he figured out like through bonding with her that she had a very bad relationship with her father um, and she never met her sister. And after a while, he kind of, became this father figure to her and it was just so sweet and I just I miss playing Wolfgang okay <laughs> after a while like it was really sweet because Rachel was like y okay look Fluffbucket was the enabler for Wolfgang's evil tendencies and then there was uh he, Wolf er, Fluffbucket was the gaslighter and then you had Rachel she was kind of like his only moral compass and so in that way she like he helped her by giving her like a sturdy guardian figure and she helped him by giving him kind of like kind of like fixing him in a weird way. Not we didn't get through that all the way, but it, it was the beginning. Oh, and also a really funny thing. You guys remember Debbie from the animated series that I'm doing about DD, which I am still doing. Her last name is Lockhart. It's her her full name is Devorah Lockhart. Wolfgang found out that not only did Rachel not know her sister, but Rachel's last name is also Lockhart. This girl that he's grown closer to throughout the entire campaign, and Wolfgang wanted to be the father that she wanted and never got the chance to have and eventually he found out that this girl is related to Devora Lockhart to, to Devi. He used the wish spell at the end of the Citadel not to bring back his fiance but to help her find Devi. And it was just it was so good instead of using his wish on his needs and this is where the influence that she had on him really shone through uh, because he this was one the one act of selflessness that he committed in the entire campaign really. Um, was he, instead of using the wish spell for himself, 
he used it to help Rachel find her sister that she never knew and rekindle that lost relationship. And it was just, it was just so sweet. Man, I I just I want to play them again. I really just love Wolfgang, okay? Don't, <laughs> don't laugh at me. <laughs>